Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today we're going to dress the little girls, which that is something that is so near and dear to my heart. I absolutely love little girls in real life and as dolls. Now, when I was growing my family, I only had one daughter, and dressing her was an absolute delight. It was all fun and games until she told me she did not like ribbons nor the clothes that I was choosing for her. So I guess until I have a granddaughter, I'll just dress my dolls. Mm -hmm. Now here I'm using the exact same technique that I used for the adult dolls. And if you look at her really, really closely, you can tell this doll's head is flat at the top. How unfortunate. So I'll have to make sure I make the crown of her hair really, really full so nobody notices how flat it is on top. I guess I just have to be grateful that it's not a hole in the top of her head. Now the style I'm creating for her is similar to the hairstyle that I created for the teenage doll in the women's wigging video. I will leave a link in the description for that. Now some of the hair got a little stuck on my needle tool and I just dragged it across the top, but no worries, it'll stick and I'll just add another weft of hair on top of it. And I realized as I was working on her that I ran out of wefts of hair, so I had to cut some new little chunks of hair to cover her head. Now in her case, because I'm trying to add bulk to the top of her head because it's flat, it was okay for me to use some chunks of the bundles of hair to just add to the crown and across the front of her hair to fill in that space. I didn't actually make any more wefts. Now again, I'm more deliberate when I get closer to the front of the hair and around the hairline. And for this little girl, because she's a little younger, I definitely want to give her a full bang across the front of her head just to make a clear distinction that she's a little girl and not a teenager. When I was a little girl, a bang in the front was a clear distinction that you were a child because the big girls didn't wear bangs. <laughs> Now, dolls, if you notice me here, I'm just dipping the point of my needle tool into my watered-down glue and just tapping it around the edges of their hair, just trying to catch up some of those little fine, wispy pieces to pull them out and almost create a hairline with what I call baby hair. Now, dolls, this is a process that is absolutely unnecessary. It's just something that amuses me, and I've really been looking forward to doing the little girl dolls so that I could do this. Now, after I was satisfied with her baby hair, I went on to add the infamous bang. And that's just one of those curls that I made when I was working on the lady dolls. And it was left over and it was big and it came across the whole front of her hair. So it was perfect because it camouflaged that weft that was right along her hairline. And I added a little glob of glue and just pressed the little bang right into it. And then I began to twist her hair up, which is the way that I thought I was going to originally style it into one bun. But I thought that looked a little bit too grown up. So I decided to do it very similar to the way that I did the teenage girl's hair, except the teenage girl didn't have a bang. Now, dolls, when you're creating characters, you have to keep in mind the hairstyles and the clothes really define the character. So it's something you definitely want to put some thought into before you create your doll. You have to ask yourself on site, what type of mood or feeling does this doll bring? So I'm going to give her a break and allow her a moment to dry. Now this doll was absolutely lovely. I got her from Minimum World. She had on a hat and everything, but I really didn't like the style. So I cut all of her hair off and just started over. After I cut her hair all off, I added it back on in a different direction and then set her aside to allow her to dry. So I went back to the other girl doll and I put her hair in two ponytails, one on the top and one on the bottom. And I actually secured the ponytails with thread because generally rubber bands are too big and bulky for 12 scale dolls hairstyles. And after I wrapped hers in a little bun on top, I added glue under it to secure it. Now again, dolls, with these little buns, after you add the securing glue, you're going to have to hold on to it for a moment until it catches or it will totally unravel. So be patient while you're doing this. So now that I was comfortable with her bun at the top, I began to work on the bottom ponytail. Now this one actually, I'm going to turn it into a braid, but I did have it sectioned off like it was a ponytail and I made it a little bit long because I wanted to have enough of it 
to a braid and then I'll trim it off. So sometimes you may have to sacrifice a little bit of hair to get the style you want. You don't want to cut it too short and too blunt too quickly because it'll make it difficult for you to braid. But always keep your remnants because they come in handy for other things. So after I got the ponytail tied off, I went ahead and braided it and tied it off where I wanted it to end before I actually cut it off. Now again, this is a little girl and I wanted to add something to her hair to give the indication that she's a little girl. Some ribbons, a barrette or something. And I really didn't have any beads or anything that would give that impression. But I did have this cute little piece of lace. And I cut it out. I thought this particular part of the lace had a nice shape to it. And it reminded me of a big old fashioned hair barrette. I feel like an accessory like that would really add to her look. And I played around with it a little bit. At first I thought I wanted it on the front of her head. Which was really cute. But that almost looked too babyish. But I thought maybe it would look nice in the back. So I ended up putting it at the top of the braid in the back and on the end of the braid. So after I decided to use these two little lace pieces, I just added a little blob of the tacky glue to the top of that thread and glued the little barrettes right down. I thought was, I was really pleased at the look of these two faux barrettes that I created with pieces of lace. I did have to trim them up a little bit more, but I wanted to add something to them again to make them look a little bit more realistic and I opted for one of my little nail studs. I thought that's just what her little barrettes needed, a little gold stud in the center. And sometimes that's just what you need, just one or two little small details to really define the doll. So now let's get back to our little curly head girl. Now her hair that I put on the back is dry, but I'm still a little bit disappointed because there are a lot of gaps and spaces on her scalp and a little girl's hair shouldn't be like that. The way they originally applied her hair, they just used the hat to cover up her baldness. No worries, Mama Doll is going to make it all better. I want her hair to be really thick and full, just like a mob of untamed curly curls. Now I realized I would have to sacrifice some of the length for the fullness but I would prefer her hair to be a little shorter and thicker than really long with thin spots on the scalp. So I began to pick up some of the small pieces of curls that had come loose when I cut the long hair off. I began to pack them in on the scalp with tacky glue. Now you see me here pulling and separating some of those loose curls that had fallen to fill in those little spaces around the edges of her hair. I sat her aside a moment for her to dry a little bit and then I went back to work. Maybe it's just me, but I think she's starting to look a lot cuter already. And dolls, I'm showing you this here just so that you can see that each doll will need something different. I didn't need to really make wefts and new hair for her. She already had hair, but it just really need to be reallocated on her head. And you really want to take the time to make each doll a little different. You want to customize the doll for their particular personality or their particular character. And it really, really adds to your settings when there's a lot of variety and distinctive features. Steer clear of the sea of same. So finally, after struggling with the little curly head doll's hair, I was able to complete the style. I did have to let it dry. Now I did end up with quite a bit of glue around the edges, which was not my intention. Now I will try to remove as much as I can with my watered down solution, but whatever I can't remove, I will just camouflage it with a little bit of brown acrylic paint. So I bound her hair up with a piece of red thread because I thought that would be easy to camouflage with that reddish auburn color of her hair. And I trimmed the red thread. And after I trimmed it, I just kind of pushed her hair all up on the top of her head. I wanted it to just be like a big curly mound of hair that's bound by a navy blue ribbon. So another thing I really want you to recognize is that her hair really is not bound up by a ribbon. I just pushed it to the top, made it look like it's bound up by a ribbon. I'm going to put the ribbon on top. So a lot of what you do with hairstyles for dollhouse dolls is illusion. You just need to lay the hair in the directions that will make you think that they're in the styles that you're imagining. So basically, for all intents and purposes, you're creating an optical illusion. Mm -hmm. And after tucking and gluing a couple more curls 
around the edges of her hair. I realized I needed to clean her up a little bit because I got quite a bit of glue on her. But now I'm going to add her ribbon. I thought the navy would look really nice with her jacket. And here we are. This is the first sister. She's got her bun on there, her little baby hair, and the barrettes that I created. I think she turned out really, really cute. And then I want to show you the other sister. And there's her curly hair and her navy blue ribbon. I'm going to need to get some of this glue off of her jacket. She had a little muff on her arm and it left a little glue spot. Plus, navy catches so much lint. And I think I touched her a little bit too. So I'm going to see if a little acetone will remove that. But overall, I just love the way she looks. But I do really, really like the way her hair turned out. Now, dolls, I know this was supposed to be a wigging or a hair video for the girls. But I was just dissatisfied with her jacket. So I cut the little um, seed bead buttons off and replaced them with brass nail stud buttons. And if you look closely, you can see... I covered up some of that gold on her jacket with a little bit of navy blue trim around her wrist. I did leave the gold around the bottom of the jacket because I thought it might be enhanced by the brass buttons. But, you know, dolls, you just have to work on your doll until you're satisfied, until you really feel like the doll is portraying the look or the mood that you're trying to create. Now, dolls, I had another little doll that I also bought from Minimum World. Now, she really didn't need anything done to her hair because I really, really like her hair. But her clothes were way too modern. So I made her a quick dress out of some fabric that I purchased at the Ann Arbor Miniature Show. And I'm just doing a really simple style. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I showed you all how to make dresses for the dolls in a previous video. I will leave a link in the description. But I wanted to get her ready really quick so she would be able to be in the photograph with the other girls. Again, I didn't go into a lot of detail about it, but I did add a few additional mohair curls around the edges of her face just to close in the style to enhance what she already had. But I really love her hair. I really love her sweet little face. And I'm just adding her a quick collar to her dress so she'll be ready for the final photo shoot. I just think she's so cute and I'm so tickled about how her dress turned out. So let me go ahead and get these ladies all together and take their final photo. There was a lot of laughing and giggling while I was getting them dressed, but they all turned out so lovely. And they're all so pleasant, such sweet little girls. You can really tell they have really good home training and they're being raised to be very, very lovely ladies. So let's get them all ready to take their final photo and get them ready for their thumbnail. Now I will leave links in this description for the materials I used to create these dolls today and the videos that are related to dressing and wigging 12 scale dolls. Now dolls, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. I have so much more to share, so make sure you stay tuned and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.